Okay, so we've looked at a number of factors to consider when conducting a cost-benefit analysis. Now let's put all the information we need into a spreadsheet so we have something to work with. Let's say we're starting a small ecotourism thing. We'll provide the lodging, all the food, the guests can come and watch the monkeys, it'll be great. But let's do a financial cost-benefit analysis to see if this project is worthwhile. This will be from our perspective, the private perspective. So remember, costs and benefits are measured in the money coming in and out of our company. Also, let's assume we've already factored out inflation and we're working with real numbers. Numbers. First, let's set the lifespan of our project. Let's say it's going to take us the first two years to get set up. Then we'll open. And then we'll operate for 15 years. We're not going to show it in this video, but all under here is where we will be calculating our cash flows. You might be confused why the stops at 16 instead of 17. It's because we call everything from now up till the end of the first year, year zero. So this is actually the first year and we count 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 17. So we call this year 16, but there are technically 17 years we're looking at, in case that was confusing to you. No? Well, it confuses me. Next, to be able to estimate the costs and benefits, we're first going to want to know how many guests we might have. With our facilities, let's say we're going to have a maximum occupancy of 20 people. For our average occupancy rate, we're likely to only have about half of the rooms filled on any given day, but this will slowly increase over time. So let's say for the first three years, we'll have an average occupancy rate of 54%. For the next five years, this is estimated to increase by 2% to 56%. And after that, we'll say our occupancy is an average of 59%. So that's the average number of people that are using our facilities on any given day. Next, we're going to want to know how many guests we're going to have per year. We're going to multiply our maximum occupancy by our occupancy rate for each year, which gives us the average number of people we're going to get every day. And then we just multiply that by 365 days for the year. So for years 2 through 4, we'll have an estimated 3,942 guests per year. For years 5 through 9, we'll have an estimated 4,088 guests per year. And for years 10 through 16, we'll have an average 4,307 guests per year. Or rather, this should be guest days per year, as this will probably be the same guest for multiple days. Okay, so these numbers are the number of times per year a guest is charged for a day. Okay, for the benefits, our revenue, we'll have money coming in from the daily charge to customers. So let's set up our prices. We'll start the price low and increase it over time. Let's say $200 for the first year as we try things out. Then we'll increase it to $320 for the next two years. Then let's just assume that the price is going to increase by 15% after year 4 and again after year 9. There, that's all the information we need for our revenue. Now let's set up the costs. We'll separate it into fixed costs, costs that don't change no matter how many people use the facilities, like the cost of building it. And variable costs, costs that do change, like the cost for food based on how many guests we have. For fixed costs, we have the construction cost of the buildings and facilities. 2.1 million dollars. These costs will happen during the first year. We'll make a little note of that, we can delete it later. We'll have startup costs. This could be things like the hiring and training process, putting in a booking system, advertising, setting up arrangements with local communities, and whatever else. And I just messed that up. 
This should be year zero. We're constructing it in the present year. And then the startup costs happen in the second year in year one. See, it's confusing. We'll buy equipment in year two when we open and they'll have to be replaced every five years. And let's make a note of that above the timeline so it's easier. We'll have to pay rent on the land every year. As well as insurance every year. And we'll also have to pay a property tax every year. And every year we'll pay the staff, I guess. Okay, that's our fixed costs. For variable costs, we'll have the operating and maintenance costs. This could be like the cost of cleaning the rooms or the administration costs of taking on a guest. We will have the cost per guest of transportation and tours. And the cost of food per guest. So later, to calculate these costs, we'll multiply the cost per guest by the number of guest days in a year. So these are all of our costs. There's one more revenue item we need to include. When the project is all done, the buildings will still have a bit of useful life in them and we can sell them off. This is called the residual or salvage value. This will be 10% of the original construction costs and it will happen in the last year. And finally, we'll discount at a rate of 10%. Oh, and this is the real discount rate. Okay, neat. In the next video, we'll set up the cash flows and calculate the net present value and the internal rate of return. Oh.